the whole Catholic system is based on the assumption that the ascension of Jesus uh, did not mean that Christ is uh, now invisible. Uh, there is a sense in which the body of Christ is still visible and actually is real and is really uh, physically uh, present in the structures of the church. The Pope is the vicar of Christ. In the Eucharist, the, uh, the bread is the body of Christ. In the teaching of the church, the, that is uh, the, the voice of Christ in, 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 in content, in, after the ascension. Uh, and uh, the self-understanding of the church as being the body of Christ, not according to the metaphor, the Pauline, the Pauline metaphor of the body of Christ, but rather with a more realistic, physical understanding of that metaphor and exchanging the metaphor with a, a, the physicality of the body. And so the, even to the point that the, uh, the power of the Pope and the Vatican state at the core of the Catholic Church, there is a political state, is argued for in terms of being it a sign of the royal power of Christ, uh, politically displayed, and... Uh, showing the fact that Rome never uh, thinks about the ascension of Christ in terms of uh, the present day invisibility of Christ in, in waiting for his return. But it thinks about and uh, already realized as Catholicism in terms of Christ being physically present. And that and, 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 and therefore, the institutionalization of Christ in the embodied structures of the church, ecclesiastical, political, hierarchical, papal structures of the church, they're all based on a Christological uh, assumption that Christ never really left uh, to, to go, he left to go back to the Father, but is, is continuing to be present through the physical, institutional uh, embodiment of the church. And that makes a big difference in the self-understanding of the church uh, in its relationship to Christ. The church is not so much a witness or a, a community of believers centered on the word and empowered by the spirit, but is actually the body of Christ, which prolongs the incarnation to the point where uh, the eschaton will be gradually achieved by the absorption of the whole world into the uh, embracement of this institutional uh, body that is the church. Right. That's, wow. Well, Jim, that's wow. really that was really helpful to me to to read Leonardo's account of this. But also, it was tremendously confusing to me to read Karl Rahner on uh, the hypostatic union specifically. Yeah. And so he's, it is the, the body of Christ, the church, quite literally, is an ongoing incarnation. And yeah. therefore, we can speak of individuals who become part of the church as experiencing a hypostatic union, though it's a small age, small you. It's not the same thing sure. that Christ sure. experienced in his own life. But that that is a, a, a foundational feature of Catholicism that I think most evangelicals uh, fail to grasp. And if we don't understand that, then we, we miss so much of what the Catholic Church is actually doing and really what's yeah. what's kind of revolutionary about it theologically. It's, yep. it's, uh, you know, other theologians have called it the incarnational, incarnational principle. And uh, that is uh, a kind of language that is also popular among evangelicals today, you know, to be incarnational. But, uh, I mean, there is a sense in which if that means to be practical, to be real, to do something concrete, uh, that, that's, that's all fine. But theologically speaking, from a Roman Catholic point of view, the incarnation uh, doesn't have to do with 
the concreteness of our actions. It has to do with that link to the incarnate Christ that goes on uh, in our in, in the in the outworkings of the church, and that what makes uh, Catholicism, uh, you know, something disturbing. Uh, if because it doesn't preserve the uniqueness of Christ, it doesn't preserve the uniquenesses the uniqueness of the offices of Christ, and it, it filters them through the operations of a, a church. In a way, Catholicism is an abnormal ecclesiology based on a blurred Christology and, uh, and filtered through the whole uh, operations of this uh, organism or institution or uh, system. And uh, this is something that we, we have to become aware of. And uh, you mentioned runner, but the same thing uh, is also argued uh, by another theologian like Yves Conga, you know, coming from a different uh, tradition within the Catholic Church, not a Jesuit, but a Dominican. And yet talking about the prolongation of the incarnation as being the central uh, uh, core uh, uh, principle of, of Catholicism. The same is true as far as a number of other pre and post Vatican II theologians. They are working on that. They are working on that assumption. Uh, it, is, it simply happens that many evangelical theologians don't have the lenses to see it. <laughs> they don't have the, uh, the eyes to, to see it because we, we think in different terms, in different ways, and we, we don't we don't see the reality that is out there. So it is something that comes out of Catholicism, not something that we superimpose on Catholicism. It's something that we learn from Catholicism, and then we are. Uh, it makes sense when we try to uh, understand uh, the whole and how it works uh, in all of its you know varying uh, different uh, dimensions. So it's not about us superimposing something alien in order to uh, build a straw man. It is about listening carefully, theologically carefully, uh, what the Catholic Church is actually saying about what she is and trying to grasp it and trying to understand it and trying to make sense of it and also trying to then uh, put forward biblical critiques. And, and, and substantial uh, rebuttals.